call the subcommittee uh, to uh, order. Today is the first hearing in a series on what government does to help low-income families <coughs> get ahead, uh, whether that is effective and how that can be made to work better. We will start with a review of our current system and how much we spend, but more importantly, whether that spending is effective in encouraging work and higher earnings by low-income individuals. So let's consider two facts. Uh, fact one, we are spending more than ever to assist low-income in low individuals and families. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, last year the federal government spent about $600 billion on just the 10 largest programs, which is over 10 times the, f uh, the $55 billion we spent in 1972 when half of these programs did not even exist. Fact number two, despite all that spending, it's not clear that these programs are offering real help. For example, despite record spending, this is the slowest economic recovery in recorded history with far too many families unemployed and living in poverty. Together with these facts, uh, make, this makes it hard for defenders of the status quo to, st to say all is well especially across the 83 programs the Congressional Research Service has identified as assisting low-income families. And these facts make it even harder still for the millions of American families without stable work and reliable uh, incomes. As we now enter the fourth year after the recession has officially ended. Today we will ask whether there are features of today's low-income programs that lead to little excess in helping adults go to work and increase their earnings. As we proceed, I note we are intentionally talking, taking, I'm sorry, taking a broader view than just those programs within our subcommittee's specific jurisdiction. Our programs are key benefits for low-income families, but they do not represent all that taxpayers do to help low-income families. To really understand what is going on, you have to look at the big picture. So. That's what we're going to do today, and that's what we're going to do in subsequent hearings. We are pleased to have a number of experts on these programs with us today, including someone who can provide firsthand explanation, and this is something that I insist upon. I always like to hear from those folks who have received help or have been seeking help and didn't receive help. We all can learn a lot from that kind of witness. And so we welcome Shade Randolph, a former client of American works here in D.C. to tell her important story. We're looking forward to that. Given the broadness of our topic, one, uh, topics, one hearing couldn't possibly do them justice, so our next hearing will build on what we learned today by exploring what really works to help families and whether that knowledge drives what we spend uh, our taxpayer money on. Finally, we will consider options for reform, including how we can work with our state partners to do better to better coordinate the current maze of government programs to better serve families in need. Our goal is to help more low-income families leave poverty and achieve the American dream. That's not Republican goal. It's not the Democrat goal. It's the goal of every one of us on this dais and every one of us in this room, I'm sure. And the fact that too many of our fellow citizens have seen that goal slip from their grasp in recent years is our call to action. The status quo is simply not good enough. Spending more money on current programs is not good enough. Reforming programs so they spend smarter to achieve better outcomes is what we all should be working for. That's the challenge ahead of us. I thank you. Mr. Doggett, you're recognized for your opening statement. 